Hey guys, it's Don here from Novus Bear Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be installing Jellyfin on the Raspberry Pi 4 with hardware decoding. So let's get started. Jellyfin is a media server software that's very much like Plex Media Server. So if you're familiar with Plex Media Server, this is basically identical to that, but it is open source. And it actually works really well on the Raspberry Pi 4 with hardware decoding, something that you cannot get on Plex. So to show you how this looks, I logged into my Jellyfin server on my Raspberry Pi 4, and I'm using the four gigabytes of RAM version. And you can see it's very, very similar to Plex if you're very familiar with it. You can select your media, see what you've been watching, uh, load libraries into it and you have different sources where you could put in movies TVs whatever you want and like I said best of all is that if I go over the dashboard and hit playback you could see hardware acceleration is enabled using the OMX hardware decoder on our Raspberry Pi 4 and now if I play anything say this one right here which is a 1080 stream and if I'm playing it raw playback or original quality I could get up to about four concurrent streams at the same time and it actually s plays really well if I skip forward in time, if it's not buffered, it plays really well. Now, if I go over to the 4K version of this video, it plays just as well. This is the 4K version. Um, pop over here and I could show you the playback data. 4K, uh, it's eight megabits on my bit rate and it runs pretty good. I mean, if I go over to here, that's fine. Or if I skip out of that buffered range, it takes a little bit more to load, but it does load and it runs great. Now, if I want to get into the transcoding part, here's the thing. If you're transcoding this on your SD card or if your data storage, I highly recommend putting on either a USB storage or connecting it over to a NAS because anything that you have to do over the SD card, the read and write cannot keep up. So if I was to play this same media file, this is my SD card, and I was to transcode this to any format, it could be the lowest format possible. I'll just put 720. I am going to get a butt ton of shuttering. You see that? It just shuttered right here. And then it'll run again, and then it'll shutter. Like I said, the SD card cannot keep up with the read and the write on transcoding data files. But if I was to do the same transcoding over to another network media, which is over my NAS. So this is over my NAS. You could see that right now I don't have any shuttering. That's because it could keep up with it. Now I'm using the same bitrate, 720 by 1 megabit and I don't have any shuttering if I'm actually using any other source of device other than my SD card. Anyway, I'm gonna show you guys how to install it onto a Raspberry Pi, which is very, very simple, and how to enable hardware decoding on. All right, so I am on a fresh install of Raspberry Pi OS. Um, I did all the default steps, like you know, setting up the password and everything and upgrading the system or updating the system to the latest thing. Uh, the first thing we need to do is pop over to our browser and head over to jellyfin.org. And in there, you can actually head over to download now. Now, the only thing we really need from this step is to add the repository so we could download Jellyfin using AppGet. And anytime when they update something, we could just do sudo app update and update uh, Jellyfin that way. And the easiest way to do this is open terminal. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. And I'm just gonna copy and paste this whole line of script. It's basically copy and paste and it's gonna enter through all the things, do whatever we need to do, and install everything that we need to install. Now that it's done installing, we still got a couple more steps we have to take for the Raspberry Pi for hardware decoding to work. So first thing we need to do is add Jellyfin user to the video group. So we're gonna do sudo user mod dash A capital G video Jellyfin. Once that is done, we have to restart the system service. So sudo systemctl restart Jellyfin. Now, if you're planning to do 4K footage, we do need to up the GPU memory. So we're gonna do sudo nano slash boot slash config. And on the bottom, we are gonna do GPU underscore mem equals 
minimum requirements is 320 just to play the 4k footage but in our case since i am using a 4 gigabyte raspberry pi i'm just going to bump this up to 512 just to have a little bit of extra headroom Control x to save i mean to quit and then save and at this point we should restart the system and then we could configure the rest All right, now that we're back, we could basically log into the system, but to grab the IP address, what you want to do is IP ADDR, and it should pop open with the IP address of your device. Uh, I wouldn't recommend changing this to a static IP via your router or you know through any means possible, but yeah, this is the IP address that I'm going to be connecting to. So I'm going to open a new tab in my browser, and the port is 8096. The first time you log in, it'll actually go through this quick setup. So I'm gonna do next for the language. Username, you could do whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave it as Jellyfin. And if you don't put a password in, it will actually leave it blank. So I'm gonna hit next on that. At this point, you can add your media library, but I'm not gonna add anything. I'm just gonna go through the settings. Next, next and allow remote connections to a server. And if you are planning to do some port forwarding or something like that and your router allows for it, you could enable automatic port mapping and it'll configure your router for you. All right, and then we are done. I'm gonna log in with Jellyfin as the username. And first thing you want to do is head over to three lines on the top left, go to the admin dashboard, and then go to playback. Here on hardware acceleration, you would choose OpenMax OMX and check these two off. Now what I ended up doing was uh, transcoding thread count, I just did max. I think auto is fine, but I just left it as max. And you are done over here. Hit save. Okay, you got it. And your server is ready, up and ready to go. All you have to do is just go back to the dashboard, go to libraries and start adding your libraries. Now there are many tutorials on how to add USB devices or uh, SATA devices or even NAS devices. So I would definitely look up those tutorials on how to do that. This guide is really just for getting the software working and the hardware decoding. Now I do recommend if you are planning to look for that, Google FS tab SMB or Samba. Those two are the ones that you want to map a network drive automatically into your Raspberry Pi when it boots up. As far as the USB SATA, you could probably figure that out by mounting a partition. Well, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have any questions about it, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.